our escape during the war. An escape that lasted seven years. And it started literally on the second day of the war. But I had a nanny. She saved our lives, there's no question about that. She saved Papa's life as well. Ellie uh, was very, very uh, devoted, particularly to me and to Lily. She literally saved us. Uh, we were her children throughout the, throughout the years of the war, no matter where we went, my, my kinder. I really regret not having talked to her more. She would have told me more, many more stories. I regret not having talked to my father more. And, and that's, but that's something, that's why I, I'm here to talk. I'm just extremely proud of my father and the nerve he had when all the six years to survive under very, very, very trying and difficult circumstances. I don't know how he did it. Uh, I would never have been able to do it, I don't think so. My name is Roman Gessler. I was born February 6, 1937 in Bielsko-Biała, which is a town in Upper Silesia, Poland. I was born a little bit prematurely. And my brother and sister were all taken care of at when, when my mother gave birth in Bochnia, at grandmother's, she always arranged it. So I was supposed to be born in Bochnia as well, but I came a little bit early. And uh, the story goes, of course, at home. We didn't go to hospitals in those days. And so my brother Alec put two uh, chairs together and, and a blanket and put me there, and that was my first crib. And there I had my first little nap. My father came from a very orthodox background. In fact, he was the first one to cut his side locks off when he turned 18. Uh, in effect, our home before the war was also a kosher home. We had a separation of Fleischig, Milchig in the kitchen and, and all the things. My mother particularly was, was uh, really religious. Uh, we were uh, quite a wealthy family. My father had uh, produced uh, liqueurs and he was part of a very large uh, corporation that was really world-renowned and, and they were the purveyors to the imperial court and my father had built up the Polish operation and uh, acquired it uh, fully, he was fully in charge of that. We lived in a very nice uh, building on Mateiko.
My brother went to shul, he went to uh, Heder. Uh, Lily, not yet, because she was only five, uh, so she didn't do that. But uh, uh, my brother was also very, uh, he was already 11 at the time, uh, he was a very um, precocious boy, um, read a lot, very quickly, he could swallow pages at one look, very close to mother, and uh, they both uh, had a lot of uh, uh, reading lessons together and, and, and were very close to each other. Incidentally, my mother was, uh, had a little, uh, what, what they used to call a salon. I don't know how big it was and how famous it was, but uh, my remote cousin later on told me that uh, Martin Buber came to our house and Max Broad came to our house. So it, it may have been a nice little literary thing and my brother was very much with it. At that time, uh, late August, uh, Papa and uh, Mummy went on vacation to the Lido in Italy. So when war broke out, there was a little bit of a problem getting back because the Frenches were, of course, closed. But I had a nanny, and my nanny uh, took me and my sister Lily uh, to our grandmother in Bohnia. My nanny, uh, Elizabeth Lea uh, came to us in 38, so she was with me in 39, and uh, she came from Katowice. Uh, oh, she was Roman Catholic, an old established German uh, family of, of Upper Silesia. As I said, Ellie took us to Bochnia to grandmother. But anyway, Papa and uh, Mummy, they came via Hungary. They actually arrived in Bochnia, probably on the 3rd or 4th of September. And Papa immediately went and bought some tickets on a train that went east. Of course, everybody wanted to go east because from the west came the Germans. And there came one of my first memories because uh, uh, we were waiting for the train at the station in Bochnia and I, I remember being held by somebody and uh, there came this bulging black locomotive with the rattling little cars behind them, you know, with all the carriages behind it. And I was astounded, I was absolutely astounded seeing this huge monstrous thing coming. But I wasn't afraid. And that, uh, that train went up to Tarnov, which was uh, not too far towards the east. And then we all disembarked. Uh, my grandmother had been with us and her son, David, my uncle David, which was my mother's brother. And my father looked to go further east and found a guy, a lost bus driver. He had come from Krakow and now the, the war was all over the place, so he didn't know what to do. So Papa paid him a nice amount of money and he took us family, that means my mother, my father, Tante Ellie, and uh, my sister, my brother and myself, to Lvov. So we arrived there uh, sometime around the first week of September. It was the first leg of a very long trek.
right at the beginning, maybe uh, probably on the 20, uh, 20th of September, uh, we were bombarded from all sides. As you know, uh, Poland was divided through the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact into two areas and uh, the war was still going on. Poland had not yet, yet capitulated. So Papa and, and, and us all were standing on the corner of, of the street in Lemberg and a car came by and stopped in front and it turned out it was a friend of Papa's. And he told them, listen, uh, come quickly with us because they are picking up people in the middle of the streets to take them into the Polish army to, to fight the, uh, the Germans. Um, we are going to Buczacz, which is not too far away. So Papa gave mommy some money, said goodbye, hopped into the car and disappeared. The 23rd happens to be uh, the Erev of Yom Kippur. We all went to the hotel, we lived in a hotel there, and Mummy went uh, on her fast. About two days later, on the 25th of September, she wanted to visit some friends. She asked my brother if she could, if she, he would come with her, and he said, no, I'm, he was involved in the book. So she went to the Loeffler's, um, family that uh, we knew in, in, in Lvov. And unfortunately, they were not home. The little girl opened the door and said, I'm sorry, my parents are, are not here. And uh, I am not allowed to, end, to let anybody in. And so my mother asked her for a glass of water because she didn't feel that well. And so the girl went to bring a glass of water. When she came back, she just saw mother uh, jumping out of the window into the yard. A real tragedy because she left a desolate husband, an 11-year-old boy, five-year-old girl, and me. Uh, I was only two and a half. And they, they didn't tell me what happened to her for a long time. What does a little boy know about these things? So they said, ah, she, she left. But I always wanted to see her, I wanted to, to meet with her. And, uh, I, I was years later asking Ellie what, what happened to mommy. Well, that was a huge tragedy. Papa came back the, the next day on the 26th, devastated when he heard the news. By the way, that was the day when the Russians moved into Lvov. Uh, Ellie, uh, she came with us from Bochnia and Bilic to Lvov. And the war had broken out and she didn't know what to do. And then when my mother died, a couple of weeks later, she wrote to her mother and ask uh, what to do. Uh, there are three little children here and, and no mother. And the mother said, well, why don't you stay with them? So Ellie stayed with us in Lvov. Papa opened up a factory uh, for spices and had a, roast, a roasting thing for coffee. Uh, coffee was very rare in those days, so if you had some coffee, that was a very good thing. And uh, many friends who had come or escaped, or Jews who had escaped from, from the West, uh, he employed and gave them, in effect, a certificate of employment so that they could stay instead of being deported to Siberia.
uh, we had to leave Lwów. And there was no question about it. Papa got himself some papers saying that he was dealing in German uniforms. He had to collect German uniforms, uh, I don't know, to mend them or to, or to, to, to whatever. And uh, he got a neighbor who had a little truck and he gave him 10 kilos of coffee and asked him to get us uh, towards the south. Basically, we wanted to go towards the Hungarian border. By December of 41, middle of December, we moved out of Lvov on a little truck. Uh, Ellie, my brother Alec, my sister Lily and I were up in the back. Papa was in front in the, in the cabin with the driver. It was an open tender type of thing. And we went towards uh, La Turca. And there we were held up by German uh, gendarmerie, or was it, it could have been the army. And uh, all I can say is that I looked out and saw the soldiers uh, by, by the cabin, and there I saw Papa move, pull out his arm and shouting, Heil Hitler. Of course, he spoke fluent German. He showed them the papers that he had to get uh, uniforms. And so they let us go. It was not the first time we had encountered the Germans or the Gestapo, and it was not the last time. We stayed in there a few days. Papa was hiding in a cupboard, I believe. And then he took my brother Alec and made contact with somebody on the other side, on, on, on a little bit further by the German border, and uh, went in that winter of 1941-42 on foot over the Carpathian Mountains. And he left Ellie and Lily and me behind, saying, we can't go all together. Let me go first. If it's OK, you come after. Well, we didn't hear from him for about two months. One day in the evening, uh, we got a cart, a horse with a cart and a kutcher. And I remember that very well. Ellie sat next to him. Lily and I were in the back on the hay. It was one of these V-shaped, uh, typical, typical Polish carts. You know. And uh, we were on our backs. We looked up at the sky. It was still very cold. But anyway, off we went and uh, came to a nice, uh, some old little hut and there were two guys in there and they are our guides to take us over the mountains so one guy took uh, the suitcase the other guy took me on his shoulders because I was too little and uh, Ellie and Lily had to trudge up the mountains and I went uh, up on top of that mountain and another mountain, and another up, and another down. And at one time, I heard all these kind of weird howls. And I, I tapped my man on the, on the head and said, what are these howls? And he said, don't worry, don't worry, it's just wolves. So, then I tapped him again later on and said, I can't see Ellie. I can't see Lily. What happened? So we stopped and waited, and slowly, uh, Ellie came up with the other guy with the suitcase, and Lily was lost. And uh, there she was, and she said, no, no, we don't can go on. They said, we must go with our patrols all over the place, and it's terribly dangerous. No, you go down, find that little girl. Uh, Lily was seven. Sure enough, they found her nearly exhausted, and, and uh, they brought her up. And we continue on our track. 
Um, by the morning, we had arrived basically on a hill uh, above the house of the priest that we were supposed to go to. He was an Orthodox priest with a wife and two children at the time. And then after a few days, he had a horse and a cart. So he took us to Mukachevo, to Munkach. At the time, we went to the train station and he bought us tickets to Budapest. And he sent with us, I believe it was his sister, one of his sisters, who of course spoke fluent Hungarian and we went to the train and the train took off and uh, in the middle of course during the journey the uh, Hungarian gendarmerie came and uh, to check everybody out Riley said uh, well fall asleep immediately asleep so we closed our eyes as if we are asleep and somehow uh, that that woman saved us telling some story because we didn't have a passport, we didn't have anything. In, in the train they checked everybody, but this woman had tickets, I don't know what else she told them. We were two little children, uh, you know, they're sick children, they're taken to the doctor. I don't know what story she told them, but we arrived in Budapest uh, around midnight. Um, but anyway, we arrived there. Papa was overjoyed, I was overjoyed, I saw him coming, I was, I was five years old. At that time, Papa, uh, he wants to get the hell out of there. And so he finds a way. He gets himself uh, some certificate that he uh, is affiliated with the French army. And uh, we ended up uh, and that, uh, in August of 1944. There was another trek and we, uh, we got into the car of the assistant Romanian consul in Budapest to get to the, to the border. Uh, we crossed the border and we ended up in a small place uh, called Arad. It's a town not, not too far from the border there. Well, it so happens that uh, uh, we, we had to leave Arad and we took a train to Bucharest. And I, I remember looking out of the window and we saw the aeroplanes coming and I saw the burning city of Cluj. The whole, the whole horizon was burning. And I remember looking up and I saw the plane flying very, very low. And my brother Eric was with me and said, ah, that's an American. He saw the star of the American. Uh, we arrived uh, maybe at 8 o'clock in the evening, some 7 or 8 o'clock, and it was terrible. 
the whole street was burning. Imagine a street with buildings of well, three, five, six stores there. The whole thing was burning. Two days, three days, four days, five days. On the sixth day we went to our building and we went down to a cellar. It had three cellars actually, three, three layers. Went to the downstairs cellar. So we were down there, Ellie and uh, Lily and I. Papa was outside again, watching for the bombs and with Alec. And we were talking to Ellie, yeah, we were chatting around. And the people heard German. So they sent a message up, shouting, there are Germans down here, Germans down here. So they didn't know what, so they sent out the military. Yeah. Sure enough, they came, the Romanian militia came down, pushed everybody aside, and they stood in front of us, put us against the wall. They said, we are Germans, put us against the wall. And uh, wanted to execute us. And I remember looking at the guy in front of me, because he had a gun. And he had the thing, and he put the bullet in it, put it like that. So we stand there, and he was waiting for the command to, to shoot. And then a big shout came up from top, and I, and I see Papa coming down, waving the past, Amerikanski, Amerikanski. And they look at him and say, American? American, American, not German. Ah! American, the first liberating Americans in Bucharest. They took us out. They took us with us. It was the honor guard with us. Took us to the hotel. The hotel was completely damaged. I can't remember the name of the hotel, Bristol or something. Uh, but the first floor had two or three rooms still standing. So this is where we went. And after seven days, we had a room. Uh, I remember um, I walked with Papa in Bucharest on 8th of May, 1945, and Papa said to me, Hazele, my little hair, today we have peace. And I look up at him and say, what is peace? So that was the end of the official war, not for us though, because now in Romania we had a little problem, where do we go? I was a nice little boy, but uh, with the bombardment in Lvov and the disappearance of my mother, and the later on the scramble and, and the shouts and, and all the war things that happened, and the endless bombardment we later had in, in, in also in Lvov, uh, all of that got me very, very frightened as a little boy and get, got me uh, physically and psychologically right off the rocker. It wasn't recognized at the time as such. We didn't know, people didn't know much about it. I used to uh, wet my bed constantly. Nothing helped. In fact, it didn't help until, uh, uh, until I got into the army. Would you believe it? At 18. volunteered uh, in the Israeli army to be a paratrooper, to jump from aeroplanes. Not just because my brother was one of the first 10 parachutists in Israel, but also because I had to overcome that fear. And once you're up there, uh, it, 
it's immaterial if you are afraid or not. The height is, is overwhelming. So it's, it's, uh, it, it was really uh, a long, long trek. Ali uh, was very, very uh, devoted, particularly to me and to Lily. She saved our lives, there's no question about that. She saved Papa's life as well, a number of times, because of her. She, she wasn't afraid. She simply wasn't afraid. I'm just extremely proud of my father and the nerve he had when all the six years to survive under very, very, very trying and difficult circumstances. Uh, so the, the lesson really here is uh, there is no question that there is nothing that you cannot overcome. Don't succumb to anything. Don't give up ever, ever. Don't give up. Mm -hmm.